Hello and welcome to the We Want Women podcast that we're doing in association with Big Condo Radio. We're right here in the studio today and we are super excited to share today's guest with you. My name's Nick Hardman. I'm Rachel Meddings. And we are We Want Women and we're a project based in Liverpool and what we do is put women's voices at the centre and we want to empower women, create opportunities, create a sistership and just basically hear about what women in Liverpool and elsewhere are doing in their creative projects. Projects. So today's amazing guest is the lovely Emily Calica. I hope I said that right. Yeah, you did. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Well, we're we're yeah. doing good. Yeah, yeah, we've just had a, a nice warm cup of tea. How are you getting on? I'm good. I'm good. Very happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice to have you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, who you are? Um, so I'm Emily Calica and I'm a acoustic artist from Liverpool. So that means that I play an acoustic guitar <laughs> and uh, I sing and um, write songs as well um yeah I like to put some like bandy stuff in there but when I'm performing live I do it acoustic yeah. very nice yeah and you know what I really enjoyed seeing you do your um your sessions over lockdown you did a series of <laughs> sessions didn't you yeah I did so basically right I I um it, it's one of those things with um lockdown motivation and feeling depressed and stuff like that and I wanted to get out of that negative cycle and I was thinking to myself the only thing that I can think of doing to help myself kind of thing was by getting dressed every day is usually a start right so if I get dressed to do something every day I've got something each day to work towards so each day I work towards doing a new video and a new video and a new video and it kind of kept my motive set on something if that makes sense just to like stop me from feeling like oh no I'm not doing anything I'm not getting anywhere one of those feelings but yeah I just yeah I, I, <laughs> it was no it was that's really great to hear though because yeah. you know that doesn't work for everybody but that's something that's really worked for you like you've yeah. really got up got up and sort of gone okay I'm gonna give myself a task that is really a great idea yeah it's more of just one of those things where what can make your mind healthy if that could make sense and I really enjoyed um, performing and doing them lockdown lives for everybody because the support that I was getting from like people was really nice as well because they were like oh I wait for your thing every day and oh, you know I was no. like oh that's that's nice if, if I'm making other people happy from it as well so that's really lovely and of <laughs> course you were a we want women winner for woman of the week as well you were uh, voted yeah. in weren't you you didn't even know that you, that I, I you were didn't, in I had no <laughs> idea about that it was just came out of the blue and I was like oh that's really cool thank you yeah. <laughs> I still don't know. You were nominated. You were nominated by somebody. Exciting. Over email. Yeah. Yeah, It was. (laughs) And it was really cool. So you absolutely are having a adoring audience. Thank you. Yeah. I I, I love them to bits. Anybody who supported any of my stuff, like, they're they're amazing. You you don't understand. (laughs) So how did you how did you get into music? How did you get into songwriting? Ah, right. Well, songwriting goes back very, very far. Um, <laughs> it goes back to uh, when I was five, right? Sounds a bit mental, right? Wow. I know, five years old. I have this, like, um, vague memory. It's very, very vague, but um, we, we were on holiday, and we came across, like, a pebble beach, yeah? And uh, it's the first time as a five-year-old I was experiencing this pebbles pebble beach yeah and I thought I just need to write a song about it <laughs> I don't wow. know why <laughs> but um, my dad had like a video of me like spinning around on the pebbles um on the beach and I called it pebbles on the shore and I was like oh pebbles on the shore I don't know but I was just like I was singing it because I, I really <sighs> really enjoyed it and <laughs> then I, I didn't really have a clue that I was gonna go into songwriting it was almost like a foreshadowment it was like mm. wow maybe maybe that will be something one day but how I got into music itself is a different story um so I started off on piano mm-hmm. when I was about 11 because my dad noticed that I had like a, a bit of a thing for music and he wanted to push it on more I didn't thing. know that that you started off on piano I did mm. but <laughs> I didn't stay with it very long because um I struggled a lot with uh, my dyslexia um because it's like reading black and white music and the teacher that I used to have she she she's a lovely woman but she was very uh old-fashioned <laughs> do you know what I mean sensing a hint and like a tiny bit of sarcasm <laughs> small she's really nice and everything but you know she really made me do this awful stuff yeah it was it was as a kid though you you, you feel it more but um of course at the time I just didn't feel like I could make my sound and it was very one of those like I'm, I'm grateful that it helps me with my theory and things like that now 
now but I'm so glad that I picked up a guitar mm. yeah when I was about 14 I just decided well guitar is my cool sound so I'll try that instead <laughs> amazing that reminds me of your story Rachel a little bit as well like you know you just kind of said that you you found you know you do you do loads of different things and then you found bass and that was it yeah so it's like my one true love you know picked up four strings I was like six strings too many piano way too many but, <laughs> you know bass that's just about right I can count to four you know oh <laughs> that's cool is that how it felt did it really feel like a like a love at first sight kind of feel when you played it mm, it was more of like like love of first sound right and how I, how I put this is um my dad used to put his old CDs on in the car on the way to piano lessons right and it's kind of how I got into all of the older rock stuff because I ended up liking some of it obviously you don't admit that to your dad do you no I hate this song let's turn it off but I, I did actually really enjoy it and then I noticed that like I'd love to sound like Led Zeppelin over there doing those crazy things or anyone I, I really got into like me acoustic artists with like first aid kit and things like that as well but yeah it all just yeah I love music <laughs> fantastic I mean we, we were um we're talking about inspirations and you know you're talking about little little things that you've heard from picked up maybe through your heritage or from from people who you know is there a one thing that inspires you or a, a number of things what what is it for you um, the thing that inspires me is definitely people. Um, so when I songwrite, I um, I do sometimes write about first person experience, for example, my, myself. But I like to observe mm. um, other people's behaviors and stories because I love stories. It's like storytelling, isn't it? So um, with a lot of my songs, I like to watch from afar and almost portray the song if I was them. Mm-hmm. and how how i would feel in that way so that's that's what really inspires me is just people <laughs> that's really it's such an occurring theme you know when we've, t- we've talked to a few different people and, and and people and other people's behavior is a really big thing yeah in terms of inspiration it is yeah i am um, i definitely get inspired by that kind of stuff obviously um with other kinds of stuff i always get triggered by emotions and stuff of my own so they're always great to express my art with if that makes sense because this is this is my art form when i'm emotional i want to get it out with a song or i want to get out with something else and maybe it will make me feel happier or if i'm already happy it makes me feel ecstatic (laughs) (laughs) fantastic Can you tell us a little bit about being a woman in the performing arts? Obviously, we're really interested in that. And recently we've been looking at the impacts of of being a female in the performing arts industry. And there's obviously clear differences there, you know. So how has it been in your experience? Um, So what I would say is that I started off in an all-female girl band and I enjoyed that for a long time. Um, We did have our differences in the end and that's why it ended. But it, it was very enjoyable but when we were in that we noticed that there there was no other all female girl bands and I I started to notice when I was like um progressing through my music that I was looking around going wow there's there's not many girls doing music and it was crazy because I remember even when I went to college to do music because I I decided to do that in my class there was only three girls out of like a class of like 25 or something mm. and the numbers the difference of the numbers was just crazy but um it tended to be that most girls were told that they can't do it stuff like that because it, it's it's a it's not their path they shouldn't be doing that that's out of mm, what would you say people make it seem hmm I, I i don't know the word they make it seem like it's wrong but it's not mm. it, it, it it's amazing in fact it is a massive problem i'd say that i'd love to see the industry become more pushing for girls to go into music do you know what i mean i'd love them the way the same way they push them maybe into like i don't know maybe other arts like dance or other things i'd love for people to push girls more in in music because some of them can be dead talented do you know what i mean but i don't know that many female guitarists i know a few but not as many male guitarists if mm. that makes sense yeah, I know it's definitely a a weird thing but yeah yeah, do you, do you think that. it's changed as well? Because obviously the, the, the Me Too movement was a huge thing that, yeah. that happened and, and really changed things, I think, you know, in, in recent years. Mm-hmm. Did you, what kind of no- changes did you notice? Did you, or is it not really affected you? See, like, I've noticed some um, changements, but at the same time, 
I don't think it has, no. I think it is generally still a big thing in Liverpool. I'd love to address it if I found a way. It's like one of those, I want a revolution, but where's the plan? Um, <laughs> this is it, yeah. Yeah, but I think we are doing better with it. There's loads of different schemes that we're doing with like festivals now. They always have to have a 50-50 lineup. So mm-hmm. like 50% female, 50% male, if that makes sense, which is amazing. But let's do it more. Mm. Let's 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 do this. <laughs> that first wave, isn't it? That kind of it may yeah. feel a little bit like tokenism with the whole fifty fifty thing. But I think yeah. as well, it's you've got to have that first wave to be able yeah. to move forward from there. What I think it is right is it's like you've got to have these girls that are coming up now who are from like um, in like primary school and things like that. They need to be told at this age this is cool. You know, you can you can express yourself this way they need to be told that 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 that's okay and they will get a lot of negativity and things like that but if you don't get it when you're young enough then you probably won't end up pursuing it or you might end your way there you might just find something and go oh this is what i enjoy which a lot of people do maybe maybe this should be like a project like we want women (laughs) to enforce that (laughs) so it's like intervening though it's from a young age as well you feel that's so important to i I do yeah definitely like um maybe if it was more of a topic in primary schools and things like that like after all the 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 thing about i'd say the thing about like everything right so (laughs) the thing about everything the thing about everything (laughs) is like it's one of those isn't it you don't know what you're missing until you lack the knowledge of it if that makes sense if if you don't have the knowledge of it you don't know what you're missing absolutely kind of thing i couldn't agree with you more emily you know i think that is really really important and it's important to have um role role models as well you know and you're like a really awesome young singer songwriter (laughs) no it's it is really inspiring to see because you know from i'm a little bit older than you just a little bit um (laughs) a little bit older than you and and it was different again for me growing up so it is for me it's amazing to see you as like a a young singer songwriter being like yeah you know what this isn't fair and this isn't equal and actually this needs to change and i'm gonna do my thing and i'm gonna say what i feel and I'm going to do that. I'm going to be a female guitarist and own it. Yeah, I am. Yeah, and I'll I'll fight for that belief that there should be more. (laughs) Cool. What's your experience as a woman, like, on the the live music scene? The live music scene? In what context? So, like, uh, as a personal experience, I've sometimes gone to a gig with my bass and I've had an engineer kind of mansplain how to use an amp to me. Yeah, right. So, what I've I've noticed, right, is... um, for some reason, uh, I'd, I'd say that men always assume that I can't play guitar. That's, that's generally like a massive thing. Oh, you can't play guitar, can you? Because cause you're a girl, but I've been playing just as long as them or longer. Do you know what I mean? Or it's, it's one of those, but they, they do. They, I have had experience like that. Um, on the live side of stuff, I've had people go, oh, I didn't expect you to be that good for a girl. It's like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Such a backhanded compliment, isn't <laughs> it? Is, it? It's like, yes, you're great, but oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You want what do you say to that? Thank you, friend. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunately the reality, though, isn't it? There's it so many is. things like that, you know. And you said there, that's a really strong statement that yeah. you feel people, you know, markedly men have actually yeah. thought, no, you can't play guitar or you're not as good. Yeah, I've noticed that people like to obviously like sexualize it a lot more as well. You always have that issue with that kind of things. Like uh, I experienced that even when I was quite young, doing you know what I mean, when I was like 14, and you'd have a lot of people going, like, oh, that's 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 fit that you know you you playing guitar and stuff but like they're all men and you're like 14 that was uncomfortable but it's an experience that can drive people away from music i think i've had a lot of friends who are female musicians that have experienced a lot of things like that and it's it's that's that's a massive problem within the industry i definitely say yeah yeah i don't think it's an uncommon experience to be made like to feel uncomfortable in a in a performance setting when yeah. you're trying to be a professional in the industry that you want to work in. Yeah, it can be as well. Especially, I remember, uh, for example, my dad used to tell me to be careful after gigs and stuff because I'd be walking home in the dark on my own, things mm-hmm. like that. And obviously, you know, as the the thing goes, it's 
slightly unnerving but and there's statistics those... to prove why you should you should feel more scared well, yeah i you suppose know, there is yeah not, that's not just a, a thing that is a approved thing approved thing which is sad isn't it very it is very sad but um i hope that doesn't discourage anyone who's thinking about getting into music who's female because i tell you to do it i tell you to do it for the excitement i'll tell you to do it for the crowds i tell you to do it for everything do you know what i mean for do the it for writing. yourself do yeah. it for yourself do it for something to work for do it do it for anything do you know what i mean you want to dance write a song write a song about dancing you want to eat an orange write a song about eating an orange yeah, because it's what you want to do and yeah. that that should be the the choice that you have it should be yeah it shouldn't be anybody else's choice mm-hmm. definitely not and it should not be scared like you shouldn't feel scared about these things and I, I know it's easy to because there's things but there's support out there there is for a lot of this so inspiring emily you know like i think we should have a look at a performance of yours so before we do can you just tell us a little bit about it um right so i'm gonna do a new song today and it's an um it's an acoustic song um um basically um yeah so i'll introduce it when i perform but okay I cool it, so you're gonna okay. you're gonna keep us waiting for that i like that oh, okay. <laughs> let's Thank take you. a look at that right now Hi, I'm Emily Calica and this is my performance of Pocket Full of Poses. It's an original and I hope you like it. <laughs> well, there's an old man and he's 78. Wait, he wanted to be an actor, star of the screen. Now, 60 years on, he's wearing someone else's clothes, and he doesn't recognize the man who once wore these shoes. So, we'll go into his wardrobe and he'll pick out a face because he's trying to be happy. Is that a disgrace? is calling a meeting she has to look fine so she'll go into her wardrobe and she'll pick out a face cause she's trying to be happy is that a disgrace well she really isn't fine do you see But you'll never see him cry, no, you'll never see him fall. Cause he puts on his face to please you all. So the next time you're on the street and you see a happy friend, make sure if they're okay or it's a means to an end. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I felt like it went really fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. So, thank you so much for having me on. I've really enjoyed talking to you today. You are so welcome and <laughs> you still need to carry on talking to us. We oh. want to know more about you. <laughs>
<laughs> right, I'll just leave now then. <laughs> She's going. Right. No, but you, you mentioned before, you know, about lockdown and... Yeah, kind of the impact. Lockdown, so of COVID. I know you worked through it, you know, you pushed yourself. But did you feel like there yeah. was a kind of pressure that you had to keep working? You had to prove to yourself? Uh, Yeah. But I'd say that's more to do with my own mentality. So I've always had... Um, felt this kind of way that if I'm not working like 12 hours a day I don't feel like I'm working hard enough oh, wow. I'm a bit of a workaholic in the fact that in what I love to do I, I don't stop at it if that makes sense um do you but, feel like you have to work harder you know, like during times of lockdown because you're a woman you have to push to be to be heard yeah I, I definitely do have to push to be heard um i think there's a lot of people that don't want to hear me as well <laughs> yeah, there is that <laughs> uh, always but there's um I, I seem to find for example with the type of music that i'm into kind of thing it, it it's starting to come out with new bands that there are female like singers and and like guitarists if that makes sense but it's not still the the big names up there then the never the massive names if you know what i mean mm. like they've got these new bands coming out like i'd say the biggest bands recently have been like you know like catfish and the bottom end kind of stuff but they're still all men that's that's what i seem to be finding or or the night cafe even mm. from liverpool do you mm. know what i mean it's never like uh they sort of have the advantage if they have the fangirl advantage which um I haven't gotten to yet, but we'll see. <laughs> you absolutely have. Like, I'm definitely getting an Emily Callisco t-shirt whenever oh, you make you. one, I'm having one. It's great. Oh, and you released, you've released, or you're releasing something soon, aren't you? It's I, um, coming out. Yeah, um, Tell us so about that. I'm releasing a new single on the, <laughs> on the 26th of um, December, and it's called Run. Um, yeah, it's all about having nightmares, and it's all a bit uh, psychological, but... Um, yeah I hope you enjoy it when it comes out and it's been on like the BBC and stuff like that yeah, I'm introducing wow. so you it can catch pretty... it on there when I play it now if you like <laughs> me, tell us like where can we where can we find your stuff where are you um online? so online I am Emily Calica and that's a bit like Gallagher but you change the uh, G's to C's don't worry you'll get there just Calica <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so you can find me on Instagram on mm -hmm. Facebook on Twitter now I've only just started Twitter but Amazing. I'm trying <laughs> cool. and is it just Emily forward slash Emily Calica or yeah, is it Emily just, Calica music or it's just Emily Calica because um nobody else seems to have my name so that's exciting <laughs> it's very unique that's awesome and you talked about like psychological psychological stuff can you give yeah. us a little bit of an insight into what it's about okay so run is is about nightmares right um and you're kind of trying to run away from yourself within the nightmare now that sounds absolutely mind-boggling and you're staring at me like well what, what have you just said <laughs> but it's like um so it's like basically the, the starting lines like the ocean seems deeper deeper than before right and that means like it, it's sort of like something's coming but you don't know what mm -hmm. it's like when you know you're in a dream but you can't escape it if you know what i mean it's like Ooh, yeah that sounds horrendous yeah. i definitely know that feeling <laughs> yeah. definitely i kind of wrote it about as well like you know as like a, a kid you always have that reoccurring dream about someone chasing you as a kid <laughs> or even now even now yeah, even now <laughs> even now and yeah. that that's what it's about because it was like wow i've noticed that a lot of people don't get this like i get this and a lot of other people get this let's write a song <laughs> yeah that, that was, that's it really <laughs> it's fantastic i'm really yeah. excited to hear it thank you and I'm, I'm excited for you to hear it too <laughs> we will share it and we'll definitely share the link as well on here thank i you. would like to know um so if you could choose um any sort of female artist at all this is i know this is really hard i hate it when people ask me questions like this but okay. i just i would really like to know since you're inspired by people in general do who is your ultimate female you can maybe have two but like if you have, have to pick loads. one <laughs> okay um, top top five top five yeah okay my top female artists or oh, i'd say first aid kit have you ever heard first aid kit i love first aid kit yeah, yeah. I, I love them they're just amazing and they're kind of new as well i mean they're not that new now but they they are new and mm. they have a very unique sound um i'd say kate bush because she's amazing like the stories that she tells and i just love her wacky persona it's amazing like <laughs> i want a wacky persona you know uh joan vs uh, obviously she was in the shadow of Bob Dylan a little bit but she 
she was amazing. Uh, I'll just give you, um, yeah, that and uh, Blondie, things like that. That I've, yeah, I could go on forever, yeah. but don't have all day. <laughs> no, it's, it's cool. No, there's some really like varied as well. Um, inspirations there. It is, but I, I sort of I reached out to that. If that makes sense, I, I had to find these inspirations because it was like I didn't get them on the plate straight away. Yeah, I, I had to look for female artists to inspire my own music as well. Mm. You really like. You really sound like dedicated to it. You know, like if I'm getting one thing from you, it's positivity. And, you know, but real positivity and dedication to what you do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's um, amazing. I'm glad that I gave you that vibe. <laughs> thank you so much for coming in and chatting to us, Emily. It's been really, really nice to to mm. have a conversation with you uh, over lockdown as well. We've not had to see anyone, so it's really great to get to actually chat to you You're over a, real a long time. Live table. person. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. For having so, me. You're very welcome. Please make sure that you check out Emily Calica. Uh, it is just Emily Calica, the only one. Uh, she's out there on all of the social medias. And uh, thank you for watching today. It's just been fantastic again to hear so much dedication from an artist oh, and yeah. such a young artist as well, which is really, really nice. I sound archaic now, but um, <laughs> it is really nice. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check out um, what we're doing at We Want Women, please go to www.wewantwomen.co.uk. That'll take us right to the Facebook page. Uh, and then our Instagram is forward slash We Want Women Liverpool. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Nick Hardman. I'm Rachel Meddings. And we'll see you very soon. Take see care. you later. Bye.